when I originally built this workbench like a year ago, I used a number of four by fours from Lowe's. It's before I had my joiner, so they weren't square and true. Over time, as they settled, they, they dried and they cupped and they bowed, so the whole top was just garbage. I thought I could rip them down and replane them and rejoin them, but by the time I got all the errors out of it, it was only like two inches thick and I wasn't about that. So I'm replacing it with five layers of MDF and putting this together is pretty simple. Just cutting it down with the track saw, laminating them together. And then I really wanted to ensure that these were flat. I got this aluminum straight edge for Christmas. So I'm using it here to check for perfect flatness. And all I'm doing is wherever there's a low spot, I'm using sanding discs as shims and I'm building that area up and then keeping it clamped down until the glue dries. And you can see here as I check both the length and the width, this thing is perfectly flat. And because it's MDF, low probability that it's gonna move or change over time. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. And you can see with the five layers, I'm right at three and three quarter inches thick. I'm just gonna run it a couple times over the joiner on both sides in the front face to get rid of any glue squeeze out or unevenness between the layers. This thing's pretty heavy, it's like 93 pounds, so moving it around and setting it down was kind of awkward. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. I wanna have four different vices on here. I'm thinking of doing a leg vise here, a really crazy moxin vise. I want it to be a twin screw vise, and I wanna use wooden gears. There's been a couple videos I've seen from other folks on YouTube, but I haven't really been impressed with theirs. I wanna make something really cool that can go here. Actually, I might even put it on this end. I don't know yet, but that's an idea, and I want to use these wooden threads for all of them. I've got this jig that I made so I can make my own one-inch dowels out of hardwood. I don't know if I'm going to do that because it's quite a bit of work. I could just use these red oak dowels that you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. Here's the, uh, the tool you use to make those wooden threads. I know one inch isn't ideal for vices. They sell bigger ones, but they're pretty expensive. And I figured one inch has other applications. You can use it for clamps or other jigs. Whereas if you bought like a two inch, one of these two inch jigs to make uh, wooden threads and screws, you're really limited to just doing vices. You're not going to use a two inch wooden screw for anything else other than a vice. Whereas a one inch, maybe you could. I've got this old cheap vice. I need to repurpose this vice that I'm gonna re repurpose. Um, and so maybe that one will go on the end there. I also wanna incorporate some dovetail grooves so I can use these clamps as hold downs. That's what I'm thinking right now. We'll see what uh, I end up doing here. But... The next step is gonna be adding some ash around the perimeter to cover up the MDF layers. I added some painter's tape on the top just to prevent some excessive glue squeeze out. Just using a jigsaw and a flush trim router bit to make sure that the ash is trued up with the MDF. Here I'm marking out the placement for the first vise I'm going to install. There's nothing cool about this one, it's just the standard wood vise that's readily available. I gotta hollow out the cavity so it sits flush with the face of the workbench.
Now I'm getting started on the leg vise. I'm gonna use a real thick piece of ash and I figured, man, if I'm gonna have this big vise facing forward, I might as well put some cool Viking designs and stuff on it. So threw some designs together, threw it on the X carve, carved it out. Then I'm just gonna cut the rest of the way through with the bandsaw and the jigsaw and trim everything up on the router. Here I'm using this handy drill press jig to prep the holes that I'll need to install the vise hardware. I salvaged the hardware for this one from one of the old vices I showed in the beginning. I started off using this jig I made a few years ago out of a spare plain iron. It basically works like a giant uh, pencil sharpener, but as you can see there's a lot of friction with this hardwood. I'm using ash here um, And I quickly realized that this ain't it. So I moved over to The router table and started using a round over bit to make my one inch dowels Once the dowel was made, I just had to run it through this threading jig. And there you go, wooden screw. With leg vices, it's very important that you have some type of apparatus at the bottom of it, which allows you to adjust the size of the opening. This is done in order to prevent racking as you clamp various thicknesses of materials. So typically you see a board with a series of holes drilled in it and you have a small peg that you can put in those different holes to adjust to the appropriate size the design i'm going with is a second wooden screw at the base and then this axe shaped this double axe head shaped piece i'll be able to spin and to adjust to the appropriate thickness as i'm clamping different materials to prevent racking leg vise is installed. The only thing I need to do with it is some black inlay on those designs to make them pop a little bit more. I've decided that this end is where I'm going to put the twin screw vise made out of wooden gears and wooden threads and then here I'm installing a tail vise. I didn't have an exact design on how I was going to do this. I was kind of just going with the flow. The first step was hogging out some material here to make room for it. I created these grooves in the sides by using this rabbiting router bit. Before continuing on with this project, I decided to stop, clean the top up, and get a couple coats of polyurethane on here. I started resting a bunch of tools and stuff on the raw MDF, and it started to mar it up. So before really screwing it up, I just wanted to get a protective layer on there.
I'm getting ready to make the wooden threads for the tail vise and I decided to experiment with soaking it in mineral oil before trying to cut the threads into it. It helped a little bit, but it didn't make a significant difference. I think for it to really matter, you gotta soak it for a couple days. I just did it for a few hours. Here I'm working on the collars that are gonna hold the wooden screw to the actual block. So when I back the screw out, it's gonna pull the block back as well. And that about does it for the tail vise. The only thing I've left to do for the leg vise is hand paint the black inlays on the designs and sand the excess off. I started this design off with a quick prototype. I cut these on the X-Carve just out of MDF to throw them together to make sure my spacing was right and the tolerances were right for the one inch wooden dowels I was using. On my first shot, everything worked out perfectly. So I jumped right into it, making the actual one. My original plan was to mill up some hard maple that I had for the gears, but after messing around with just the MDF ones, the gear seemed pretty strong and I really wasn't worried about the teeth breaking off during use, so I decided to just use the ash that I had left over. I'm just really taking my time here, making sure that everything is lined up perfectly because at this point in the project, I'm honestly getting tired of working on this workbench and I just really wanna get it done so I can get back to doing some other projects. And it was also the last bit of ash that I had left. So I knew if I messed this up, I would be screwed and I'd have to use some other type of wood and it wouldn't match the rest of the workbench. I originally planned on using maple screws for the twin screw vise, but out of laziness, I just decided to use the red oak dowels that I bought from Lowe's and they're plenty strong. So if you plan on building something like this in the future, don't be afraid of just using red oak dowels. These wooden threads are glued in place on the gears and that's probably strong enough to hold them in place but I just wanted to add some extra insurance in there so drilled some angled holes and then inserted an aluminum roofing nail and I did that on all these in two different spots. I have to say too those little springy nail countersinks are awesome. I wish I would have got it years ago. Now I just need to install it on the workbench. 
took all the other vices off, moved the workbench over to the assembly table, got ready to figure out how I was going to mount this thing. It was really just a matter of clearing out two pockets to allow the wooden screws to inlay and then screwing the face directly to the side of the workbench. And there you go, she's done. You will notice that it's not lefty loosey, righty tighty, but the inverse because of how the gears are set up, but it's easy enough to figure out. Now I'm drilling all the holes I'm going to need for my pop-up bench dogs. I didn't want to go too overboard with this. I did just as many as I thought I would need. And you can see these uh, push to open cylinder cabinet door latches that I got from Lowe's. And all you have to do is grind the plastic off so they drop right into those one inch holes. I don't know why, but these things were so satisfying to play with. I probably spent 15 minutes just standing out in my garage poking these dang things. I'm just cutting the dovetail grooves into the top of the workbench that I'll use for the clamps to slide in there. You can see one is holding the track in place. I didn't want to go overboard with these either. If I find that I need some more in the future, I can always add them. Here I did some experimenting with a variety of clamp accessories, I guess you could call them. I just threw them together real quick and cut them out of MDF. Now I'm just giving everything a final coat of polyurethane. I did thin it down a little bit with mineral spirits. I wanted to experiment with another type of bench dog design that I saw. So I had to cut a flat face in it and I thought I could do it on the bandsaw, but Pucker Factor was pretty high on that. Decided not to and play it safe and use my newly made leg vise to cut that flat face in all four of them. Those black things you see in there are just small magnets. You can see from the picture here how it works. I drilled a screw down into the base of the hole and then depending how you orient those, they can either stand up or lay flush if you twist them. And that is it, I'm done with this workbench. Getting all the vices reinstalled and I'm just using some rat angle metal brackets to secure the top to the base.
Well, she's done for now at least. There's a couple things I'd like to do. I'll probably put some leather on the faces of all the vices. I'll probably put a couple more layers of poly on the top. Um, I might drill some additional holes. I really want to experiment with doing wooden hold downs. Um, I just didn't feel like drilling holes all the way through quite yet. So I'll use it for a couple months and we'll see if I need those. The V groove clamps in these tracks will probably suffice for now but i do like the idea of some wooden hold downs i think those are pretty neat i didn't go off a digital set of plans when i built this i kind of just went with the flow and made things up as i went however if you are interested in plans and this is a workbench you see yourself building and you're interested in building please leave a comment below and i'll generate some plans and i'll make them available for my website a lot of the other miscellaneous pieces like the cylinder latches um the jig I use to make these wooden screws, I'll be sure to link all those down below the video. So if you have any questions on this build, please let me know. I check comments almost daily, so that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.